my least favorite main sheet system main trimming system and that is emirates team new zealand now it's my least favorite setup but when you find out why they've done it that is the clever thing so what we see on emirates is actually a very similar system to luna rossa it's just nowhere near as neat and tidy but there's a very specific reason for this so i said on luna rossa they have the two hydraulic out holes and um, that's exactly what emirates team new zealand have as well and their main sheet goes up to them now emirates team new zealand's main sheet is the hydraulics for it is in the clue as well unlike luna rossa who have a turning block and it taken under the deck so what this allows uh, emirates to do is not have that turning block not have anything taken under the deck keep those hydraulics up and between the sail skins now it looks a bit crappy if i'm honest it fattens the clue of their sail out and we've seen some recent photos they're still trying to clear up that section of the sail they've also got this um it's quite neat actually ball and socket joint which just allows the skins to articulate a little bit in the tacks lets that windward skin um, come backwards and the lewis skin come forward to accept the mass rotation and then they've got the out holes as well it also allows a little bit of vertical play between the skins as well it's that ball and socket joint it's kind of like an automatic adjustment um, for the uh, emirates team new zealand guys but the main sheet is this high big hydraulic cylinder which is going through the ball and socket joint and down to the traveler so kind of they're not really getting anything that luna rossa aren't getting um so why well there's another nice feature of the emirates team new zealand setup and that's their mass rotation which is linked back to the traveler to the main sheet system so that you can rotate the mass and then when the traveler moves the whole kind of rig moves with the with the traveler system um, and they can kind of tweak those lines to how much camber they're forcing uh, forcing into that lower section that's another really um, excellent point but again all that system is above deck and is more windage and you think of luna luna rossa and how neat and tidy they are and you've got to think yeah for a team which is so ahead of everyone else emirates team new zealand setup kind of just looks a bit average a bit agricultural but there's a very special reason for this and it's another rules workaround no ads on this video it's supported by boat speed boat speed is a four step system to getting the perfect event finish for your race boat you can go and check out their site at boatspeed.com there's a 10 percent discount code just mozzie sales Links all in description. Cheers to the guys at Boat Speed. Reason for this, and it's another rules workaround. And the other teams will have been kicking themselves when they saw um, Emirates Team New Zealand boat come out. And this is their mast foot. So I said before in the rules, the mast rotation point, your your ball that your mast sits on and rotates around, is fixed, and it's a fixed height relative to the foil cant axis. And what that means is you can't lower your mass foot. Lowering your mass foot would give you more leverage, more writing moment. It would lower the center of effort in the sail, allow you to carry more power. So they can't move that um, mass ball point. But what they have done is lower the deck around the mass ball. And you'll see from this photo that the, the ball is set up on a plinth, meaning the deck around the mass foot is all much lower and they've extended the mainsail down around this mast plinth and the mast fairing down around it so the mast is sat up on a pedestal rotating and they've got all this fairing and all the sail shape down below the mast foot that's extra sail area um, extra power all down low a low center of effort where you most want it and it gives them a hugely powerful huge writing moment another 18 inches of um, of mast length but it's 18 inches down low in this nice power zone also allows us to drop the deck more reduce the frontal area a hugely clever rules workaround again from emirates to new zealand to exploit this rule of the mass rotation point 
but again that kind of feeds into their boomless setup if your mass rotation point is up kind of like 18 inches above the foot of your sail you know where are you going to put the boom you don't want to be putting your boom slanted up and onto a gooseneck on the mast because the mast is actually quite a few inches above above your sail above your clue so are you not going to want to put the mast on the deck then how are you going to rotate it relative to the mast because the deck's staying still but the mast is rotating so that's a bit of a headache so that whole kind of this whole sort of design philosophy of lowering the rig um, has led them to having the boomless setup and it's also led them to have their main sheet within the clue of the sail because if you've got a lower deck you look at the back of emirates team new zealand boat there's no room in there it's literally the underside of the hull traveler they've got their rudder in there as well but they've got no space for a turning block and um, controls under the deck like luna rossa so that's why the main sheet system has to go in the clue but it doesn't look great but remember you know other other boats their sails are only really beginning where the green camber line is on emirates team new zealand's boat so it might not look great but they've just got extra area down there a very clever setup okay and finally let's talk about the top of the rigs they've got this four meter zone where they could do anything they want within between the skins to articulate the rigs and at first you're like oh this is incredible we could do whatever and there's some shots at the top of um, Ineos's um, sail where they um, stuck in quite a heavy articulating boom which must have weighed a ton and no matter what you do up there you've still got to um, carry that shape through the unsupported sections so you're still gonna have to support those sections or manipulate those sections with tension so being able to physically push in a shape to a, to the top of the cell and the bottom cell yeah it's good but you still need tension to carry that through the rest of the sail plan so sticking a, a really hard big heavy mechanism up there isn't the way to go certainly not the way to go that i think and we've seen some later shots from um, ineos where they've refined that down to just a couple of um, lines and I think this is very much like the advanced wing systems those guys have been showing their posts on Facebook seen quite a few um, quite a simple but clever technology so there's two lines which goes to the opposite skin from the back of the mast and you can basically adjust the two skins and the amount of camber in those skin battens by adjusting the opposite opposite line um, I think Ineos is a little bit more refined than that obviously the mast rotates kind of the opposite direction to make that automatic so they've got another link piece in and lever so that the kind of trailing edge of the sail isn't really rotating around the mast it's rotating around this hinge which is about a third of the cord long um, but I think that's probably pretty much how all the boats are doing it and you can adjust those tension to kind of pop your battens it's not like a really physical hard structure but it does allow you to pop the battens and any skiff sailors will know like when you get overpowered it's just nice when your top batten on a square rig just pops inverted it's draggy but it's a big writing moment gain allows you to carry power down low now the trick of this is being able to transition from that inverted section up high down to the power down low and i think that's where teams like new zealand who are starting that transition lower because they've got sail area lower down can really get that twist off and inversion and we've seen some footage of them doing that another way to reduce the center of effort in your sail is basically just to cut big chunks out of it up high and there's a rules loophole basically there is a minimum size for these sails but it doesn't include any kind of like cutouts between protrusions so these little bat wing sails are just a rules workaround to get a smaller sail area lose that sail area up high reduce the center of effort get more writing moment however you know blading off the top of your sail or inverting it yes that gives you more writing moment but it's draggy on the other hand you could just get rid of that sail area which is a lot less draggy but when you go downwind and you want more power you don't then have that sail area available to you 
However, it's interesting to see the teams play around with uh, this aspect of the rules and this kind of trade-off in drag upwind versus power downwind. So I think that concludes um, the mainsail setups. You know, there's nothing magic in there, but I think there is some really interesting stuff and it's more about being clever about how you use the tools you've got. So I hope that answers some questions. Um, in terms of power, all the sails are powered, all the movements in the sails are powered by the grinders. They're accumulating hydraulic pressure and then it's a mainsail trimmer via a wired um, kind of Game Boy console who's adjusting that. Quite a lot of the helmsmen as well have a traveler control. So during the maneuver, whilst the, um, whilst the main trimmer swap sides, the helmsman can trim the sail as well. We're seeing that on, uh, on all the boats, but in terms of manipulating the sail shape, I think that's the mains I'll trimmer for the um, for pretty much all of it. Okay, we'll probably talk about mains a bit more when we can get a few more good heli shots of the um, of the mainsails and comparable winds. We'll probably have a little bit of discussion about what they're trying to do, but um, hopefully that's giving you some insight to the systems and the pros and cons of each. Again, Emirates Team New Zealand they spotted the whole of the rule and they've exploited it. Um, we'll do another video on all the ways that that New Zealand have kind of got to the edge of this rule and maximise their writing moment. But the mainsail is just another example of that. Really clever, really clever uh, boat design from those guys.